the list of countries that they feel they need to dominate in order to get what they feel they need. Um, and by the way, this is the ninth post-Soviet war, not the first. So there, there's a pattern here. If you think you can just give the Russians some land and they'll stop, you clearly don't know recent history. In no particular order, Moldova, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, parts of Romania, parts of Poland, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Kazakhstan for sure, probably Uzbekistan as well. The Putin plan for the first two decades of his reign, feels weird saying that, uh, was that all we have to do is make sure that the West isn't present and that we control the top level elite so that we can have this as a buffer that we control, but we don't necessarily have to occupy. And what they've discovered in the last 10 years is that doesn't work. Because if you have a cozy, corrupt elite that's beholden to the Kremlin, that generates resentment, even if no one on the outside is manipulating events. And one of the things that deglobalization is bringing us is other people manipulating events. It used to be during the Cold War that if an ally started mucking around with Soviet interests, we brought the hammer down on them. Because nuclear war is the risk, and if there was going to be an escalation, we wanted to make sure we had that on a very tight leash. With the United States stepping back, all of a sudden everyone else is doing things on their own. Uh, and one of the things that the Russians are having difficulty processing is the most aggressive supporters of Ukraine aren't American. They're Polish, they're British, they're French. Oh my God, the French are in the game again. It's so much fun to watch. Uh, but there's now 50 capitals, including the Australians, who just don't want to feel left out, who are playing very, very actively across the former Soviet space. And there's very little effort from the United States to ride herd on this because Biden can only focus on so many things at a time. And I don't mean that as a slam on Biden. That's just the nature of the world that we're in now. And that means that the Russians' only option is direct control. And so it's an occupation. It's a deliberate genocide to whittle down the numbers. Well, think about the environment we have been in for the last 40 years. We have had the baby boomers being at the peak of their conservation, then moving into the peak of their investment. And those two trades demand a lot of American trade economic patents, especially in California. California before the 80s was kind of backwards, wasn't in the top tier. Cartenly didn't have Silicon Valley, they had an agriculture system. That was because they just couldn't compare with the Midwest or the General South. But with globalization and with the baby boomers turning to capital provides that shit. Globalization set the East Asian rim on fire from a good point of view, and a lot of manufacturing moved there. And but Americans still went stop, so we import largely through the West Coast. And so that's the Long Beach story. That's at least at heart of the LA story. That's part of the Tacoma story and the Seattle story. Second, all of this capital combined with millennials hacking their urban experience. That's the Silicon Valley story. And so we had this white transformation where manufacturing left. But processing of manufacture could become hard. The agriculture changed because instead of Proceeding beef and white and rice. They saw to the price insensitive Chinese and produce carriers and pistachios product with very very hard margin. Environmentally devastating. But California is not consistent, but made a hack amount of money for the ferry and then Silicon Valley would to the programming and the design of system to help disease. And what's the world? dematerialize a lot of productive processes and so that hurt a lot of the united states especially the old steel blade but the people who managed that process and developed that process in california did very 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 well for themselves so california went higher and higher and higher up the value chain and a number of industries it's over their number one source of population growth. Number one and number two for the last 30 years has been migration from the south. That's now negative. Or migration of millennials in. That's now negative. The capital is no longer there. And when China breaks, that's the last of those three big trades that create the California we know. And we'll be left with regulation. That's not enough to run a system on. 
so we are going to have the revenge themselves now they have done it before i have full confidence they can do it again the question is how long is it going to take them i would say more than five years and in that time california becomes the sick man of the united states everyone assessment my own include we are proven wrong in the first week of the war and then the first month of the war and currently by the end of the summer that the russian could vote in so completely that the ukrainians with nothing more than a few zips could have to like turning counter offensives that would just rag on so much territory so quickly and then now the russian have discovered how to fight a defensive war so they can be thrown it's up in the air there's two ways it can go in my opinion whether or not it goes luck quickly or slowly i don't know number one they eventually do overwhelm ukraine the russian if they do that <coughs> it will be because the west losses the ability to supply them with the equipment for political or more likely for material weapons or materials reason our ability to manufacture there what they need it's limited and once we get through all of those back stocks we'll have the soviets between giving them our mainland stuff or very little we are go we are not going to hit that this year we're not going to hit the hit that next year but probably the year after they're spinning up we are spinning up what we can produce but it takes time the russians are spinning up faster and their tolerance for pain is much higher and that's before you consider their ability to say bring in stuff from china or iran or north korea or wherever else those all come with their own safe and but it's a more releasable product steam than than what we can do in the long run and then if we do cat pollen where we are forced into a direct fight we will have nukes fly and that's one of the reason why the biden administration is pulling out all of stock on missile defense there's a fair way going to need it second scenario it's the ukrainians win but even if they park the russians from all of their prior territories that's not enough the russians know that they lost this they cease to exist as a current country in under two decades and so they are going to try again and again and again as long as they can and so from the ukrainians to prevent that from happening they will have to cross into Russia proper and neutralize a couple of major logistic hubs. That's an invasion of the motherland. That would justify nuclear use too. So we are in this really wide edge, unfortunate situation where the best case for us is to fight the last Ukrainians within Ukraine. Now the Ukrainians I have take talk to in the government. They are fired. fine with the because they know the alternative is to die to the last ukraine and russian hands without weapons and the ability to fight back and from them there's no choice here i would love from there to be a third way i don't think there is i am very bullish on the united states in general but i also have a very good appreciation from the countries that are going to help us turn the page historically problem is the most of them like mexico don't really have functional capital markets so i like at large and mid cap in the manufacturing more and more small cap i like companies that are energy intensive in their operation because we have the cheapest electricity and chemicals and oil on the planet i like companies where the demand for their product is demographically driven driven because we have the healthiest demography in the rich world and mexico has the healthiest demography in the advanced developing world okay thank you for watching geopolitical analysis